Welcome to the first ever virtual open day of the Graduate School of Media and Communications here at the Aga Khan University. We are so excited and glad that you responded to our calls and are curious enough to attend with us today, where not only we, the faculty members, will share, but more importantly, students who have embarked on this very program. Some have been in for two years, some for one year. You will hear of their experiences and make the judgment for yourself whether or not this is the right place for you to continue on this journey in, in your journalistic world. But we are sure you'll be convinced by what they say as we go forth. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all familiar with these little bottles and these things we wear around us every day. How does that affect us as we move forward? How does it affect us as we communicate when I looked on the panel screen and I see my colleagues all across the world interacting with us today? These are the things that we have to look at today and figure out what role we can play moving forward. To give us a welcome, a formal welcome, is our Dean, the Dean of the Graduate School of Media and Communications, recently appointed into this position, Dr. Lawrence Pintak. He will share with us a message of about five minutes. But guess what? You'll not see him in person. You'll see him virtually. He is approximately 10 hours away from us, the west coast of the USA. That is where he is trapped at the moment. And I say trapped because we know he desires to come here as fast as he can. But due to the pandemic, there are, of course, logical limitations to that. But he has pervaded upon the value of technology, a tool we use here very much in GSMC to communicate and enable, and enable us to learn to be able to share a message with us. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the Graduate School of Media and Communications at the Aga Khan University, Dr. Lawrence. Hello to all of you who have joined us today. As I'm sure they've told you, I am the very new Dean of GSMC. Uh, my background is, uh, well, I tell people that I'm a journalist masquerading as an academic. Uh, my whole career has been in journalism um, as a Primarily as a foreign correspondent, covered the White House, spent many years in and out of Africa, lived in Southern Africa for a number of years, um, Middle East, Southeast Asia. So um, I've kind of been out there where you hope to go, uh, but I also have been an academic. I was the dean of a journalism school here in the U.S. And I say here because, unfortunately, I'm the dean of a journalism school in East Africa, but I'm sitting in the state of Washington on the West Coast of the US, uh, because as we all know, uh, and the reason that some of you are doing this online rather than in person at GSMC is that COVID and the pandemic have really made things difficult these days. Uh, I'm hoping to pack up and move abroad, uh, you know, within the next month or two and get down to Kenya at some point um, early this fall, but we're all kind of watching the, the COVID curve. Uh, but I certainly, will be there for the day that you begin your classes. And I look forward to that day and I look forward to meeting all of you. This is a really interesting time to be a journalist or be entering the profession. You have all undoubtedly heard about job cuts across the industry. You've heard about the changing nature of the industry, the transition from print to online, uh, the, the multimedia nature of the media. Uh, even the newspaper industry, of course. And all of that, yes, creates challenges, but I firmly believe that they create many, many opportunities. Uh, I wouldn't be in this role or my previous role at an American journalism school if I didn't believe that. I think this is a time of dramatic change in the industry and a time of dramatic opportunity. So as you hopefully enter our program as you evaluate programs and, and decide whether to come in. Um, many of you are already working journalists. So you know you have the lay of the land in the industry. You know that it's changing. And you can see from our curriculum that this curriculum is going to give you the kind of skills and not just skills, but mindset, worldview to approach journalism in a new way. You're going to learn the digital skills, which are critically important. 
but you're also going to learn about directions of the industry. You're going to learn new ways to think about stories, new ways to break outside the, the dominance of political coverage and policy coverage, uh, to look at other important issues for East Africans and, and folks way beyond East Africa, um, issues of uh, policies around the environment, around uh, minority groups, around um, health, obviously, all you have to do is log on to any newspaper or any news organization in East Africa or the world, and you see the dominance of health coverage. So it's not, it's not enough anymore to be a general reporter. You need to understand and have the skills of writing a story and reporting, but you also need to understand the stuff you're going to be covering, the topics, the issues, and that's also what this program is going to give you. And most important, and I'll wrap it up here because you don't want to listen to me just talking into a camera. Uh, most importantly, you're going to be able to do what we are teaching. Um, I've worked with media programs, communication programs, journalism programs across the Middle East. I ran what was then the only graduate journalism program in the Arab world in the lead up to the Arab Spring. I've worked in the Caucasus. I've worked a lot in Pakistan and in Indonesia. And in all of these places, the, the one commonality is that journalism education is changing, but much of it is still trapped back in the academic mindset of theory and, and uh, academic approaches to, to issues and reading about people's theories about this and that. That's not journalism education. That's broadly media education. And that's fine if that's a direction you want to go. But you are all looking for a practical journalism experience. And that's what this program gives you. So I'm going to wrap it up now. It's a shame that I'm not with you and that we're all not in a room. Um, it's also a shame that I can't sit here and take Q&A from you. Uh, because, again, the reality of my being on the west coast of the U.S. is that by, by the time you're watching this, I am hopefully sound asleep. So enjoy the rest of the orientation, and I look forward to seeing you next year. Ladies and gentlemen, as Dean Pintak said, journalism is changing. The world has changed. The question is, have you? Or what are you doing to change, to be able to fit into this new norm? These are the areas and others that we will explore today through the opportunities given through our school today. Let's move on to the next phase. We want you to listen to some of our faculty members and hear what they have to share with you. Our first faculty member is Dr. Peter Kimani, who is an author, and we're very grateful to have him with us you may be familiar with one of these works or a couple of them, Nairobi Noir or Dance of the Jacaranda. Dr. Kimani will share some things about GSMC, his experience in the journalism world as a professional in this field, as a lecturer, and also perspectives of what some of the things students or learners may be able to benefit while they're with us. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Peter Kimani. All right, thank you so much, uh, Gitonga. And it's good to see you after many weeks um, of uh, communication virtually. So I am coming uh, live to you from a cafe, waiting for a cup of coffee, <laughs> celebrate as you proposed, um, on Mombasa Road. So I'm not half across the world, I just a few hours off the city. And um, uh, so a very warm welcome to our students, current and uh, prospective students. Uh, so I am the founding faculty member. So I am the one who was recruited to start the program uh, some five years ago. And um, my, my background is journalism. Uh, so like Lawrence, I am a journalist masquerading uh, to be an academic. So what we, what we try to do or what we have aspired to do as a school is uh, first and foremost, 
to understand uh, our context, the times that you are living in. Um, my, my journalism principles are founded um, in this, in this uh, wise statement by the founder of the Washington Post that journalism is the rough draft of history. So what we are doing today as journalists uh, to capture the present will be a reference point uh, for many, many years to come, uh, decades uh, to come. So we have to tell our stories with integrity, um, with commitment to at least uh, capturing all the facets of truth as manifest by many interest groups. Uh, so um, we have been fortunate over the past uh, two or three years to inaugurate some interesting programs that um, uh, cut a different path. Uh, so what we try to do, um, especially in this age, uh, when you no longer uh, look to the newspapers to tell the latest news, but to understand the latest uh, perspective and the implication of the events that happen today. So, uh, so in other words, for 100 or 200 years, journalists have been selling the latest news, but not anymore. It will be layers of perspective, layers of analysis, layers of knowledge that deepen and extend our understanding of the events that we face every day. So what we try to do um, uh, at GSMC is to push the boundaries of what's being reported today uh, to uh, get students to think differently about uh, what they're reporting and how they report. So for me, coming from uh, partly a uh, creative writing background, I am interested in storytelling as maybe the only salvation to this business of journalism. Uh, so we no longer hold the monopoly, we as journalists, to inform the world what happened today. It is how we interpret that world that makes it a little more interesting for, for the readers. And these are extremely tough times. Um, you know, job cuts uh, have been reported across all the major news organizations in, in the country and the region. Uh, so you are not going to be guaranteed, uh, as I was 25 years ago, as a young reporter, guaranteed of a job that will comfortably pay off my mortgage or uh, you know, pay off my children's uh, fees. But, but you have enormous opportunities to think about the new possibilities of how we communicate and share knowledge. Uh, so uh, what, uh, what I keep telling my students, uh, you know, the present ones at least, is that what I can guarantee them is not a job uh, after they graduate, but I, I can guarantee that they will be prepared to face the unknown. So whatever transpires between now and the time they graduate, um, I, am, I am confident that they shall be ready to face the unknown. And um, I don't think if there is any, any better safeguard in, in the academy or any other, any other professional, um, uh, a professional outlook where one feels confident, one feels well prepared to face tomorrow, no matter how uncertain it can be. So all I can say is to encourage you um, uh, to think about the course, uh, go online, see what you've been doing in the past. Um, the students who are uh, still pursuing the course will tell you how rigorous we have been at times a little too demanding, um, but I, I never apologized for being too demanding because I know I make similar demands of myself to give the very best to my students. So I'll pause there. Uh, my coffee has finally been delivered. I can, I can get hunger. If you allow me, I can show you <laughs> the cup of coffee. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and some nice pancake. So, those who are those who are going to join perhaps if you join the program i can at least guarantee you 
a cup of coffee once you join the school. Thank you and um, uh, good to see you all. Thank you so very much for that, Dr. Kimani. That was a wonderful one. We did not know you'd show us the pancakes. So those of you who are familiar with Jibaji Gardens, you remember the stories of air burgers. So that's an air pancake right there for you. You can see it virtually, but you cannot actually enjoy it. So founding member, faculty member of the Graduate School of Media and Communications. The next faculty member followed very fast in suit right after Dr. Kimani to ensure that the program was robust. You may have seen him quite a number of times on TV. He's quite strong on social media channels as well, and a political as well as analytical commenter on TV and radio. Ladies and gentlemen, this is none other than my good friend and colleague, Dr. Sam Kamal. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Gitonga. Greetings to you all. <laughs> Greetings to you all, our current students and prospective uh, students, um, for even uh, you know joining this particular session as we discuss uh, more about our MA program, and to encourage those who are considering applying uh, to perhaps by the end of this session to have made up uh, their minds, as we tell you more about the program. Peter has already uh, said much about the program, so what I'll do is I'll give a quick summary and uh, overview. Uh, of this, and then uh, allow now the other speakers and uh, the beneficiaries and consumers of the program to share their experiences. Um, I always, you know, because I teach in the first semester, I always ask the students, when you apply for the MA in Digital Journalism program, which part appeals to you most? Is it the MA part? Is it the digital part? Is it the journalism part? And I think it's a combination of those three. For those, if it's the MBA part, it's just somebody who wants to get a postgraduate qualification. For those, is the digital part, is perhaps you want to acquire certain skills that would make you comfortable and be able to function in the current environment. And then for the journalism part, is those who want to become better in what they do in the craft and the profession uh, of journalism. And I guess uh, whatever your motivation, uh, those three uh, elements will always be met by this particular program. But I want to say the thinking behind this uh, program and setting up on the MA in Digital Journalism was supposed to achieve four things. The first one, uh, perhaps that addresses the digital element, is being able to build and develop the multimedia skills among the journalists so that you're able to function effectively across um, the different platforms. That is the, you know, the skills part, the digital part. But there's a second one, which our dean alluded to, uh, where I wanted to develop uh you know specialism in, 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 in a, uh, expertise in a specialist area of journalism and that is why for example now the health area has become uh, you know uh, quite prominent and i think part of the thinking even about a uh, future you know review curriculum review of this particular program we look towards strengthening uh people's ability to you know uh report or function in a very uh, in, in a specialist area and that is part of the session that peter tends to handle so that's the second issue the third one, which has now even become relevant with the current unusual times, is to build your entrepreneurial skills. We have seen, and the link is what Peter was saying, that we do not uh, guarantee that going through the program, you know, you will decide to get a job, but it's saying at least it gives you, you know, uh, the skills uh, that you require and the capacity, uh, because we've seen quite a number of people, especially even some of our students were affected in the recent uh, uh, you know, layoffs that happen in the media sector. I saw quite a number of people. There are those who, of course, were absorbed in other uh, professions, related professions in like communication, but there are those who set, set up their own platforms. And together with our innovation center, and I can see quite a number of people. They're also, you know, preparing people, those who want to take the entrepreneurial route. Uh, so that is the second thing the program was, uh, the third thing the program was designed to do. And number four, the last one is supposed to build your leadership skills, develop your leadership so those three, three, four things, build your multimedia skills and capacity, uh, build expertise in a specialist area of journalism, build your entrepreneurial skills, and develop your leadership uh, skills and capacity. And you will see if you are to go through the curriculum. And uh, if you allow me, uh, I could share my, uh, let me see whether I can share my screen, uh, just a little bit, but this is on our website. Huh? Uh, you can see it on our website. Basically, it talks about uh, uh, you know uh, the way the curriculum is designed, 
and you'll see what we do in semester one, semester two, semester three, semester four. This is just, uh, you know, how it's designed. Semester one is the foundation, addresses some of those things that we were talking about. Uh, content that says, which Peter was talking about, building your investigation, uh, investigative skills, media law and ethics, which is quite important. And of course, uh, past, present and future, which focuses on our changing world. Then semester two goes a little bit deeper and you can see the things I alluded to. Talks about, of course, strengthening your digital skills and entrepreneurial skills I was talking about, but also leadership and the specialization. That is the essence of uh, semester two. Then semester three uh, is a bit more of the research element which uh, culminates in the uh, either uh, a thesis or what we've been talking about, um, a project. So this equips you on that, which also goes into semester four, the final product, which is the thesis. Eh? Uh, if you visit the website, you'll be able to see quite a number of these things, of course, goes into the application procedure and all that, which I guess will be shared uh, more a little bit later. But the other thing I wanted to point out, of course, is um, with the disruptions that came, you know, early on in the year, where all of a sudden the president came and said, of course, that I would not continue, you know, with the usual face-to-face -face interactions and uh, skills. For us at GSMC, the good thing is we did not even cancel the class, you know, the following week. We were able to seamlessly, you know, switch to uh, online uh, virtual teaching because we have the uh, infrastructure, online infrastructure to support that kind of uh, teaching. So the following week, we just continued with the classes as usual because we've invested over time uh, in an online uh, infrastructure and architecture to facilitate this. And that is part of what we've also been strengthening in the last couple of uh, months. Uh, there is Moodle that is able to support our virtual learning environment where you're able to find resources and material. And we've been also, uh, we'll be doing some orientation also for the current uh, groups and prospective students in terms of being able to function within the virtual learning environment. But also now, it means that uh, because we've been preparing this for the last couple of years, it was uh, it was easy. Of course, the one thing that we are missing, and Peter has uh, guaranteed, uh, is a cup of tea because we tend to interrupt, you know, our classes somewhere in between, and we're able to share a cup of tea and also get to uh, interact a bit, uh, which is a key part of this uh, program. So we are hoping that uh, perhaps in the future situations uh, will allow for us now to be able to, uh, you know, reintroduce that uh, particular part. But I think uh, when you look at um, the way the program is, it's supposed to be very student-centered and student-driven in many ways. And we're looking at now how we can use the current uh, reality of, you know, the virtual learning to be able to still ensure we are able to achieve those uh, particular, uh, you know, core elements of our program. So I don't want to continue, you know, talking on and on, but I think I've given you an overview Support, like I said, student driven, student focused, and then to address the critical issues uh, of the day. I'll be happy to respond to the other quest uh, to questions that could come up after the other people who have been in the program get a chance to share their experiences. Then we can uh, discuss a little bit more. Thank you, Gitonga.